Hello, this is Free Thought Forum, a program by the Atheist Society of Knoxville and the Rationalists of East Tennessee. I'm Brian Metzger. And I'm Joseph Johnson. And we want you to know that if you don't believe in God, you're not alone. Right here in East Tennessee, you can find free-thinking atheists and agnostics. This is a show for them and people curious about living a life free of supernatural beliefs. This is a call-in show. However, we only have one phone line. So if you can't get through, we invite you to email your comments and questions to us at freethoughtforum at yahoo.com or tweet them to at FFTVKNOX. The Rationalists of East Tennessee monthly activities uh, on the first and third Sunday mornings are usually lectures with lively roundtable discussions. The second Sunday is a book club. The fourth Sunday is the Reflections Gathering, which is a potluck afternoon gathering at a member's home. The Atheist Society of Knoxville is a fun meetup, often at a bar or a restaurant. Tonight's meetup at Barley's for happy hour, uh, tonight after the show for food, drink, and conversation. And Friday, we often meet at the Bearden Beer Market in Bearden. To find us at either of these places, just look for the silver-jacketed copy of The God Delusion standing upright at the table. Today is August 21st, 2012, and we will be talking about raising secular children. But first, in the news. Uh, first thing up we have is groundbreaking female comic Phyllis Diller is dead. With wild hair and a wild laugh to match, Diller was known for an eccentric and sometimes cynical stage persona. In her private life, Diller was an atheist who wanted to be remembered as having made ki kindness her religion. One of the first female stand-up comedians, Diller appeared in such 1960s television classics as The Ed Sullivan Show, Laugh-In, and The Tonight Show. Diller appeared in more than two dozen movies, including three with Bob Hope, with whom she also appeared on new, numerous TV sp specials and traveled with to Vietnam to entertain U.S. troops. Her self-deprecating humor and zany appearance was a fixture of popular culture in the second half of the 20th century. Diller was a mother of five when she made her nightclub debut at the Purple Onion in San Francisco in 1955. She was 37 years old. Diller went on to enjoy a career in entertainment that spanned nearly 50 years. With regards to her atheism, in 1999, Diller told the Minneapolis St. Paul Star Tribune, quote, we were not created by a deity. We created the deity in our image. And in November 2001 issue of a and Magazine, Diller said, Religion is such a medieval idea. Don't get me started. I have thought about every facet of religion, and I can't buy any of it. Interviewed for a 2011 profile in Out Magazine, Diller was asked how she want, wanted to be remembered. She replied, For being funny. Well, I should say being kind. I am a kind person. I'm kind to everybody. I treat everybody the same, and I'm proud of that. In fact, that's my religion. Phyllis Diller died in her sleep at her L.A. home, surrounded by family. She was 95. All right, so tonight's program, we're going to be talking about raising free-thinking children, raising children uh, without the presence of religion in the household. Uh, since this is both my and Joe's first show, we thought we'd start out by talking a little bit about ourselves, especially since this is a topic that's really more influenced by our backgrounds than topics that are often on this show. Uh, Joe, you want to start? Sure. Uh, my name is Joseph Johnson. I grew up outside of Chicago. Um, however, we've been living in Knoxville for about six plus years. I have two children, uh, a daughter, Reverie, n age 10, and a son, age 5. We've actually brought Reverie with to the program and perhaps we'll have a chance to bring her out, maybe ask her some questions. Um, I was raised in a Christian background. However, I think that my parents were extremely liberal, and I do have the notion that they only raised me Christian out of a, uh, possibly out of a, to pay tribute to their parents, to their past, and uh, put us in an extremely liberal church where it almost felt like a Unitarian Universalist where you were allowed almost any thought you wanted and they would work with you on it. Nothing was really shoved down your throat and um, forced upon you. So I grew up by the end of that ready to um, 
explore religion and find out what else was out there. And after about a decade and a half of searching through different religions, reading as much as I could about every religion I could find, I finally found that they were all kind of um, loaded somehow. Didn't really yeah. get any of them. Uh, and attending a lot of the churches, you see the same sort of format of, of, of a group mind and um, sort of a, don't know how to put it, but a format, a format where everyone kind of follows a program. You read from it and there was no questioning anything. There was no free thought. Mm -hmm. It was all about following in line, getting in line, joining the group. And that certainly was not for me. Uh, well, my name again is Brian Metzger. I was brought up in Cranston, Rhode Island. I was brought up in Reform Judaism, which a lot like your background is a very liberal form Judaism, probably comparable to a Unitarian Universalist church. Uh, I often quote or paraphrase Bertram Russell that Reform Jews believe in one God maximum. So I was very into uh, Judaism, did a lot of Jewish youth groups when I was a teenager. Uh, went on, you know, went off to college, faded away, didn't really keep up with my religion much, and a few years later when I had finished school and started working, that was when I first discovered actual kind of atheist thinking, people like Christopher Hitchens, Richard Dawkins. I came to it mostly because I'd taken an interest in extreme forms of uh, creationism and started seeing these videos on YouTube, got really interested in videos that responded to them and showed why they were wrong. Found myself learning a whole lot more about evolutionary biology than I had learned in school. Uh, so I kind of have creationism to thank for my atheism. Hmm. So I, I didn't really convert to atheism so much as I sort of realized that I always was one. I feel the same way. Yeah, and my, you know, even as a kid growing up in the temple, I remember rejecting any notions of a theistic God, even though I didn't know to call it that at the time. I remember saying, uh, you know, I, I don't think God is an old man in the clouds. Maybe he's an energy that connects us all. Maybe it's, you know. You, the key you word find, being maybe. Yeah, you find a lot of fudge factor kind of thinking, a lot of fuzzy logic, a lot of soft things that can't be disproven in these kinds of communities. And that's one of the things that I now want to try to avoid, and what you were talking about with kind of a group think, I remember a lot as a kid asking questions either to my parents or in the temple, things about morality or right and wrong, and having the response be, well, Judaism teaches that. And I don't like that now. I like to, when I'm talking to my kids, hopefully say, well, here's what I think, Here's what somebody else might think. What do you think? I think that phrasing makes you think that the person saying it believes something different than what they're telling you, but they feel uh, they feel that they have to come and say, here's what Judaism teaches, not here's what I think. Why buffer it that way? Not say this is the way it is, but say, oh, before you have a thought on that, this is what you're supposed to do. Yeah, in a way, and also, um, that it's just kind of an easier way out of a situation. If something difficult is asked, you can steer kids away from asking harder questions, things that you're uncomfortable with, and just say, well, here's what the group says, so stop asking questions. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't want to ever tell my kids to stop asking questions. I should have mentioned, I have one son. Uh, he's about a year and a half old right now, so most of my opinions and thoughts on parenting in this realm are really untested. I'll freely admit that. I'm not offering advice or uh, telling anybody what to do. I'm interested to hear what you've been through, having been presented with more of the challenges since your children are further along than mine. Um, and I'm sure that'll come up with well, even at, too. Yeah, even at 10 years old, the oldest one, um, the questions don't get too tough too quick. They, they, uh, there's a good uh, gradient of, of difficulty there. And I think um, it's nothing to worry about because you're not going to create a horrible child by giving them the wrong answer. 
Well, I mean, the, the story I've told people, I remember after we found out that we were pregnant, but before my son was born, I was thinking about it a lot. And I was in PetSmart one day with our dog. And a cute little girl, maybe four years old, stopped and asked if she could pet him. And I said, yes. And she's chattering to me about her dogs. And she says, I have two dogs. You know, this dog is named this, this dog is named that. And I used to have a dog named Shadow, but now he's in heaven. And that seemingly innocuous statement sent shivers through my spine. Because I remember thinking that Gator, our dog, mm -hmm. is probably going to live long enough that he passes away when my son is old enough to ask the question of what happened. And religious parents have this nice, easy, oh, he's in heaven, it's easy. great there, you don't have to worry about it, make the kid feel better. It's such an easy out that I remember thinking, I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm right. going to have to come up with something that isn't going to feel as good. I haven't really had to deal with that yet. <laughs> um, I, I, I think in anticipation of that coming up, I've often address the, the animal's deaths probably humorously, mm -hmm. joked about it, um, brought it up. I'm actually, don't want to bring her out too soon, but I'm curious as to what she thinks Should, should we bring out? Reverend, do you want to come out and answer this question? Sure. Okay. Um, to keep it as a topic around the house, that uh, when we, we have one dog that's getting old, we're super old, uh, her hips are going bad, and you know, you, you know this is inevitably going to come up, and both kids are going to mm -hmm. have to deal with this. So um, we talk about it. We talk about how she's old and how she's not always going to be there. And now we have a new puppy, and we've joked about how uh, we've jumped the gun and kind of replaced the old dog early. <laughs> but Reverie, yeah. and, and she might, what, what, and your knowledge, what do you think well, happens when a dog dies, or, or a human for that matter? Well, really, I know that Shorty... Shorty's the yeah. oldest dog. Well, in a few years, it's probably not going to have her anymore. It's going to be sad, because, especially to Ghana, my brother, because... He really likes Shorty. What do you think happens to her, to the dog, when she dies? Do you know? To say, so, I don't know, is the perfect answer. I really cannot say that I know anything. Do you want I don't to know? know? I don't know either, but I, do you want to know? Are you curious? Yeah, I'm, I'm very curious. Where, do you, where would you turn if you wanted to know? Who would you ask? I don't know, there's really no way of really knowing what happens after an, an animal or person dies. I agree with there's, that. There's no way to know because you can't bring anybody back from the dead and ask them what it was like or anything. That would be cool though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it certainly would. Unless they were zombies, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, do, you, do you feel like your dad's, you know? does a good job talking through these issues? Would you, do you feel like you'd be happier if he could just tell you something that felt nicer, like everyone's gonna go to heaven or mm. anything like that? Do you know about heaven? Do you have any ideas about what heaven is? The stories, anyway? Well, in stories, heaven is um, just a cloudy place where everyone's happy. Where everyone's happy? Yeah, that's a good I don't know why they would be happy after death, though. Well, maybe see old relatives. Maybe to, nice. to stay there forever in the clouds. Or perhaps They'd be just their heads in the clouds. They'd be what? They'd be moving a lot because moving the clouds move. That's true. Mm -hmm. But some clouds, but clouds do disappear, so they have to like move from cloud to cloud. I imagine uh, it's mm -hmm. kind of like uh, where the Care Bears live. Yeah, care a lot. And care yes. a lot. The All the cars are built out of cars and rainbows. <laughs> awesome. Let me, let me ask because something I wonder except about. No, but, except they're not all bears. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> something I wonder about as my children grow older and go to school. Rev, do you, Rev, do you see a lot of kids in your school that are religious? Do you talk about? Uh, well, I go to a boys and girls club, mm -hmm. and most people there. Are Mm. Mm. They, they believe in God and mm -hmm. yeah. Do they talk to you about it? Yes. And what do you? How, what what kinds of things come up? 
Whoa. If I ever mention that I don't believe in God, I always say, don't be offended by this. And after it, I say no offense. No offense. I don't want them to be offended by me not. Do you, do you feel like you have to buffer that? That in the experiences before you said that, that people were offended? Or are you anticipating that coming up by maybe what I've said? Or is it is it from experience that you say that? Or are you kind of... Um, I just don't want them to be sort of upset because of what Has it ever happened before that someone was upset when you said something like that? Well, sort of. They're like surprised mostly. Like they're su sort of surprised at me. Are you surprised that they do believe in God? Well, not really because I think people should be able to believe in whatever they want to believe in. You know? It's like... Have you ever had anyone get mad at you? Or maybe be mean to you because of your disagreement with them? Not really. That's good. You, know, you that's come good. at it from a good place. I think that's good. Uh, we should probably remind everyone this is a call-in show. Um, we welcome anybody to call in, ask either of us questions, make comments. You can ask her questions as well. She's here for that. Um, give me advice or, you know, just tell us that we're dooming our children if you want. <laughs> Whatever you have to say. Um, do we have any calls yet? No. Um, what a, let's see here. You had talked to me about um, the kids, your kids growing up or child at this mm -hmm. point and um, mimicking your atheism rather than right. coming to their own place. And I had, uh, we disagreed a little bit on that. Do you want to? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of uh, set it up. My feeling, and a lot of this does come from uh, reading what really is just about the only expert advice book that exists on the subject, which is uh, Raising Free Thinkers, A Practical Guide to Pan Parenting Beyond Belief by Dale McGowan. Um, we do have a call. We do have a call? All right, All right we'll come back we'll around. We'll come back to sure, that. Sure, sure, sure. Let's see. Hello, Free Thought Thorm. You're on the air. Hello, this is Faithless Thor. I've been watching the program and uh, must say, uh, they're all delightful there on there. And I have a few little questions for you. Okay. I grew up also not believing, and when I was a young boy in school, um, I was never threatened with hellfire or anything like that. But I was told once, I think it was probably when I was in fourth grade, that oh, you can't do Christmas. I was wondering if young ladies ever had that experience. Sit down, Reverend. He's asking, um, has anyone told it, you? you can't have anyone Christmas? expected that since you said you don't believe in God, that you miss out on things like Christmas or Easter or these other holidays? No. You've never had that happen? No. And, um, do you celebrate Christmas? Yeah. Yeah. We celebrate Christmas happily every time. Yeah. And, uh, one of the things we do every Christmas is kind of go over its history. Mm -hmm. Um, the Saturnalia and all, all the different steps and, and how Christmas truly is, despite its name, a combination of so many different pasts and different um, histories of different cultures. And more than anything, it's a time for family and a time to uh, give presents. We like giving presents yeah. and we like getting presents. Yeah. Who doesn't? <laughs> um, and uh, I actually have a friend who's a Jehovah's Witness who, ironically, is the exact opposite. They don't celebrate mm -hmm. Christmas at all. And um, they seem to get a lot more flack for that sort of practice than we do. And for us, we, we can pick and choose whatever we want, the good Keep and the, the bad. Keep the good, leave behind the bad. And, yeah. Uh, there's, nothing, there's no reason why uh, not believing in God or not being religious bans you from taking any of the good traditions from religion, taking any of the good lessons from the Bible. I've had people say, you know, when I tell them I don't think the Ten Commandments is a guide to morality, they say, well, then you must think murder's okay. No, I don't. I think we can look through and pick the three or four out of the ten that <laughs> right. work for us, follow those, and leave the rest behind. Um, but we, she definitely does um, all of the commercialized holidays, uh, Easter, Christmas, what, what am I missing? Halloween. Halloween. That's not so much Christian, though. Mm. <laughs> <I don't think laughs> but we like Halloween. All right. Can I, young lady, how does she know she's being good? Or maybe when sometimes she's being good. Yeah. Did you hear that? 
Ooh. The call's breaking up a little bit. How mm-hmm. how do you know you're being good? When and what what would you use to judge your morals? Is this a what I'm about to do? Is this good or bad? If you don't go to church and have that sort of training. don't know how to answer that. That's an answer in itself. Yeah. yeah. You know? Uh, if you didn't hear her, she said she doesn't know. Doesn't know how to answer that. And I, I would hope that as, you know, as my children mature, that that'll be a continuing discussion. I don't personally think that we have nailed down exactly what right or wrong is in every single instance in life. And again, I, I don't view my job to be teaching my child to think like me, to, to believe the same things as I do. I think my job is to teach my children how to think, not what to think. Mm-hmm. So, and that part of that means that if my son gets older, he decides that one particular religion really speaks to him and he wants to participate in it, he believes in it, that's okay with me. I'm not trying to produce a clone of myself. I'm trying to train him for life and you know, make sure he knows that he has unconditional love from me and from his mother. Um, oh, I have uh, one little more question for the young lady. Um, I assume, you know, you, you've got a younger brother, I think? Yeah. And you know that, you know, you, you can't hit him and you hope that he doesn't hit you. Doesn't that maybe tell you about what we expect of one of them? What was the last part? That we don't hit one another. And that we understand that if we do, that we hurt other people. Yes, okay. Mm-hmm. And that's what keeps us from doing that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you're, if you're, <laughs> if you have hit your brother, when you do hit him, does it, how does that feel? Well, most of the time he gets upset and says I'm mean and it's that. How does that make you feel? Do you want to keep doing it? I think that each instance... Most of the time, he does it back. He does it back? <laughs> yeah. Starting little fights. Yeah. Um, I think as a... Pe- I'm going to say goodbye, and I hope you get some more calls, and thank you for talking with me. Thanks, Thanks so much. Those are awesome Welcome. questions. Um, in, in regards to that as well... Oops. Still learning. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that in our house, we try to let each one of those instances be a lesson itself. And it does take seeing her brother hurt to really understand that that does hurt him. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, um, as we get older and the situations become more severe, that can be detrimental. Oh, I killed that guy. Now I know not to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, But at these these little instances, these little things that are happening, um, I've felt that that works really well. And they do fight. And I'm sure that Christian kids who were told not to fight don't fight as well, and when they do fight, I tell them not to fight, and occasionally we have to punish them in some sort of way, take away the video Yeah, game. well, um, well, sometimes my brother, like, starts crying. I know that I didn't hit him but so bad that he should start crying, but then I, like, I'm like, oh, I didn't mean to hit you that bad, so I, like, I so try to... you just want to hurt him a little bit. <laughs> I, yeah, I did be, like, stop. So you know him. there's a, there's a limit. Even mm-hmm. if you are doing something bad, you still have something in your brain says, I went overboard, I went too far. Mm-hmm. And you haven't necessarily been taught that. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I don't, I feel like I barely hurt. I feel like if it was done to me, the same exact, like. If he had done it to you. And it felt the same way, mm-hmm. it wouldn't hurt as much, but I guess he's just more sensitive. Somehow. Okay. And really, I mean, you might not articulated it at this point, but what Reverie is talking about is experiencing empathy yeah, and making judgments based on how things would be if the situation was turned around, which really, if we think about it, is where morality comes from primarily. It's, you know, and that's, that's a discussion that at a later date could be had. You know, why, why do we think these are wrong? Why is it important to think about things from other perspectives from your own yeah to wear another shoes sounds kind of like the golden rule yeah which i believe is christian 
Hey, the golden rule is something I would keep, even if it was originated before the time of Christianity. Hey, but they put their names on things. Sure. Right? The Christian rule. Mm-hmm. The Christmas. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just slap your name on it, and it's yours. I'm not above celebrating solstice here and there. <laughs> um. Yeah. Oh, and um, sometimes we do, like, little, little presents on winter solstice. Do we? Sort of. We, we did last oh, year. I didn't know that. A good idea. We did. <laughs> we certainly did it before. Cool. We might do it again. You be in charge of that. <laughs> All right. Um, before we had the call, although I'm hearing another call coming yeah, in. Yeah, we'll get it when I'll hold off for that. No, go ahead. Um, we were talking about mimicking translates. Actually, you know what? You did segue into that during the call, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, the, the thing that I try to keep in mind is I want my, my children, my son, to come to his beliefs, whatever they turn out to be. I want him to come to those himself. I'd be more disappointed than anything if he grew up thought exactly the same things that I think now because he wants to think the same thing as me. And I want him, as he becomes old enough to really process that, I want him to understand that, that I expect him to figure this out for himself, that I expect him to have his own reasons, to be able to defend his own beliefs. Um, and that's more important to me than what it is he lands on. I, um, I definitely feel differently. I feel almost like atheism and not believing in a God, being secular, is kind of, in my mind anyway, and maybe this is this way for every side, but it's kind of an ultimate goal to be able to live that way without it being challenged or without it having, in atheism, without it even necessarily having to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And to me, a full study of all the religions and the possibility of, of um, one by one determining that each one you don't agree with is um, it would be nice for me if they could live their whole lives as apatheists. Maybe know it's not that it's out there, but not have to address it. Um, her youngest brother, about two years ago, he was about four years old, asked me if the word God was a profanity because the only time he had ever heard it was from people saying yeah. saying it, um, I guess it's called in vain. He hadn't heard it as a being or... We got another call. We got another call. Uh, go ahead. Caller, go ahead. Hello? Welcome to Free Thought. Welcome to Free Thought Dorm. You're on the air. Excuse me? You are on the air. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. No problem. I couldn't tell. Um, okay, my question is for, um, I guess all three of you guys, um, my question would be, if Christianity was proven to be true, would you still not believe? Oh, I can answer that. Yeah, go for it. I'm not sure what you mean by proven, but go. Right. I, that's really what it is. I think as atheists, we don't have, um, we don't feel that atheism is proven, per se. It's about free thought. It's about c the continuing process of questioning. We're going through every day questioning pretty much everything. And proof to us is very much up in the air. Even if God, a, a God came down and said, here I am, I'm the God of your Bible, I think there'd still be a doubt that perhaps he was an alien in disguise. Uh, you don't, the, the ultimate proof to me, well, I, I don't know that it can exist. And I think that's the heart of it. I'm yeah. sorry, I didn't hear what you said. You you feel like what doesn't exist? Ultimate answers. An, an end to questioning. And can I ask the caller, do you consider yourself religious? Um, yes. Okay. Um, the thing that I think about this, and it's what I'll express to my children when they're obviously old enough, um, is that for me, my atheism is more than anything a skepticism and a questioning of where beliefs come from, why we believe things. And one of the very important things, especially in science, for whether or not an idea should be taken seriously is whether it can be proven false. An idea that no conceivable evidence could arise that would prove it false is not an idea that's worth holding. Uh, so I can personally imagine any number of things that would make me 
question my lack of belief. Jesus could enter right into this room and start shooting people with laser beams out of his eyes. And I would seriously have to question my understanding of the universe and take a step back and say, maybe I was wrong. Um, but okay, what, I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt or anything, but Jesus doesn't come down and shoot us with laser beams. He did mir proven miracles that people that were eyewitnesses to account for all these miracles. Um, so it's not like it's, you know, we're talking about uh, theological writers and stuff who wrote um, big, huge manuscripts and stuff about all the miracles that Jesus did, which was way after Jesus um, you know, crucifixion and everything. So it's kind of like when you say, this is what my concern about, like, what you guys are saying. Because everybody has free thought and that's God gave us the ability to either follow him or not. It's your choice. But my concern would be if, 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 a, if, you, if we could say, hey, here it is, here's Jesus, let him do a miracle and you still don't believe, then that's almost like saying you're, you're intentionally trying to be so different then because if we could prove that okay yes Jesus you know did live and he did do miracles then if we could prove that then the answer would obviously be like yes I would believe it I would believe it and be a Christian uh, but does that make sense it does make sense um, it's but like if I could prove to you that your shirt was blue and then you said, yeah. and I said, okay, I can prove to you your shirt's blue. Would you believe it? And then you said, no? Uh, I mean, it's like... Hang on a second. What, what I'd like to say, it, anecdotal stories are not proof. You, they sound a little bit stronger when you call them eyewitness. Um, you, yeah, they you are. Could, they, these you, are like independent hold on a second. theological people. I mean, this... You could, I could find you eyewitnesses by the thousands in India who would testify to the same sort of miracles that Jesus was said to have performed, only they were per performed by a mystic over there by the name of Sachi Sababi. Eyewitnesses who will swear, you know, up and down that they saw him perform miracles, things like walking on water and transforming water into wine, all have been performed. The fact that we can find eyewitnesses is not absolute proof, especially when those eyewitnesses were thousands of years ago. Now, the question I'd like to express back and something that I'd like to talk to my children about, something that I'd like to have them thinking about is, what kind of evidence could you imagine being presented to a believer that would make them question their belief? I'm not really sure that there is any. I think we've seen enough really rough things in the world. I think people are Christians and totally decide not, you know, like, hey, you know, convert to Judaism. You see Christians convert to Muslims. You see vice versa. You know, I think it's, you know, what people are obviously taught, just like you're going to teach your kids a certain path. Just like, you know, as a Christian, I feel like, you know, that's what God wants me to do is teach my kids um, about Christianity. Um, so it's like, I'm sorry if I'm sad and hostile, I'm just nervous. Um, okay. But I think that it's not just the feeling we have in our heart, or um, it's not just that kind of like, oh, well, I have faith, that's why I believe. I believe for tons of different reasons. But, you know, a lot of things are proven from the Bible. You know, science has been wrong lots of times where the Bible went back, like the Bible has said, you know, um, God said the earth is round and everything, and then scientists for a long time said it was square, and then now, oh yeah, it is round. So there's lots of things that science has been wrong about that the Bible was always right about. Science That's loves one. being wrong. But science loves being wrong. That's one of the greatest things about science, is we get to be wrong. And we can change what science says. Science can be adjusted to new evidence. Look, I, I think we're getting a little bit off topic. All, re, all due respect to the caller, I appreciate your call. Um, I, I think we should try to steer back because we could easily spend hours on this. Uh, but thank you very much. Um, and this is, honestly, I, I can see these kinds of questions coming towards me in a, in a town hall meeting for us, you know our local government, I can see it happening in a school council meeting, I can see it happening to my children on the playground. And I don't want to protect them from the idea that there's religion out there and that people 
think like that. I want to prepare them for the possibility that they're going to ask these questions. Um, Thank you. Um, do you feel that you need to prep them? That you will need to prep them for those conversations? Well, I sure, I sure hate to think that I'm just going to be sitting home and you know, feeding them answers and feeding them responses. That's not what I want. Sometimes I'm afraid that's what books do for me. Yeah. Feed me answers. Um, but no, I, that's why I hope that our conversations at home will be more back and forth. What do you think? Uh, I'm really hope to, and this is, again, totally untested. I haven't gotten there yet. My son's just 18 months old, barely says a few words. Uh, but when we get there, I really hope that what I'll be able to do as a parent is approach most of these discussions by asking him what he thinks and building around that. And in every possible instance, avoiding hammering down on him with what I think about it, unless he asks me, in which case I'll answer honestly. Well, you know, I do that in every, like you said, in every aspect, and not just in religion, is we question. Every time she thinks she knows something, or he, um, or they have an idea, I try to tear it apart, and at least try to tear it down to its base, mm -hmm. down to the fundamentals of where that thought comes from. And if you think you know something, do you really know it, or can you tell me yeah. why you know it? I think we have a call. Hit we have it, a Rev. call, and Rev's hitting the button. You're on the air. Do you want to say it? Yeah. Go. <laughs> Okay, Cole, are you on the air? Good job. Uh, yes, I um, I just wanted to say that I I am I've always believed everybody has a right to choose whatever they want to believe, and Thank I you. don't believe in debating that issue either. The only thing that bothered me as I was listening to the program was when the questions were being asked earlier of uh, the little girl. By the man, um, was that there was not really any, uh, it was like there was not any, um, I don't know, um, what would you call it, um, more, more, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, she wasn't sorry to hit the little boy. It was like, okay, the little boy wasn't really hurt that bad. He shouldn't have cried or he hit her back or something. But, I mean, uh, the only thing that concerns me about the whole thing is that I don't think that we just grow up and we've got this in our heads. I know we have a, a sense of what's right and wrong to a point, but sometimes children have to be taught that, you know, this is wrong. If they don't, if they can't sit and tell you, well, do you, what, you know, what did you feel when you hit your brother? And they can't tell you it didn't make them feel bad and it sounds like there's a little bit of a problem by letting them just go and form one of you said something about you believe in letting them just make up their own minds or form their own opinions can i can i try and respond to that before we go too far i hate to interrupt um mm -hmm. when i said that i meant on the topic of what they think about questions of a religious nature I want to let them have their own journey when it comes to where, where, where they you know where they stand on theological matters I do not let me clear clear the air on this I don't want to let my child have his own journey in deciding whether or not it's okay to hit somebody well I'm gonna tell him it's wrong to hit people well now how I and I believe you're talking directly to me they do know not to hit each other. When the man asked her. Yes, yeah, so they do know not to hit each other, and absolutely I've taught them that. Mm -hmm. And the question isn't, you've been told not to hit each other. A, a child doesn't hear, I'm not supposed to hit my brother, and then never hit their brother. Yeah. If they go to Sunday school every week and are told, don't hit your friends, don't hit your brother, they're still going to do it. Every kid does that. The question, what I'm saying is that they're going to have to go through that and discover why they don't hit that, yeah, why we, they don't that, hit their That brother. was my, my statement exactly was that she couldn't give an answer as to why or how she felt. Well, uh -huh. Do you want to do you want to well, readdress that yesterday? Do you want to readdress that? No. I, I'm asking I her if she would that. like to. I just have a concern oh. for a child that, that doesn't mm, no, feel, you know doesn't what know what they feel about it's, it. I mean, she appears to be old enough to yeah. know what she feels. 
it can be hard to express these things, especially with a camera pointed at you. So I hope nobody's judging too harshly based on just a few minutes. I'm not, I'm not um, judging. Well, per perhaps I can get, I can put it, put a, put this to rest. Reverie, do you feel satisfaction when you hit your brother? Does it make you feel good to hit him? It doesn't make me feel good. All right. Does it does it help alleviate your anger? When you're angry, does hitting him make you feel like, oh, now I'm not so angry? Ooh, when I'm mad at him, when I get really mad at, at him. Would you hit him because you were mad at Brad the TV? Mm -hmm. So you respond to him like with TV violence. Do you understand that whether that's good or bad when you do that? I, I know that that's bad. And it's, well, most, most of the time, it's just me yelling at him. Just you yelling. Do you know that if that's good or bad, just yelling? It, it, it's still bad. But okay, it's when just, you've like, done that, do you feel any way afterwards? Well, if he like keeps doing it, it makes me mad. It makes you more mad. Well, let's say he starts crying. How do you feel? How do you feel after you've done something that's made him cry? I, I feel sorry. I try and apologize because I didn't realize that I would make him cry. I think the way. And in some situations, I think that it's not so much that he should that he, his response should be crying but I, I still try and apologize you're still trying to apologize what if he's not crying <laughs> there's, I mean, a, there's a degree at which you apologize i i think this is all pretty typical i'm, I'm going to say thank you to the caller um this all sounds pretty typical i'm not hearing anything in uh the description of what happens around the house that would be fixed right. by going to church and being told the bible says not to hit people Partly because it doesn't always say that. Sometimes and I think we go back opposite. to empathy. I think the empathy alone can and is enough for someone to adjust their morals based on sympathy and empathy. You hit him, he cries. You think, what if he had hit me? How would I feel? And then in the same way, it's, you just feel sympathy. You see someone crying or see someone hurt and you have a regret and you know next time to slow down that hit. And it might take a few times growing up before you realize this. But by the time you're a teenager, by the time you're an adult, you've had enough of these sibling inst instances that you don't do it. I'm uh, in my early 30s and I see my sister maybe once a month and it's been decades since I hit her. Yeah, I mean, uh, what really struck me about that call... That's a joke, I don't even remember hitting her once, I'm sure we did. <laughs> what really struck me about the call was, as I'm listening, I'm, I'm waiting for something to disagree with, for something to be, uh, to, to push back against, yes, and there, really, like wasn't, agreed very there much. really wasn't much there. I agreed with everything she said about how, uh, how she feels these situations should go. I think the main disconnect was that she thought that you were missing something that you really aren't missing. Mm -hmm. I hope we approach. were able to touch back to that. Yeah. Um, with those, with digging deeper with those questions. Um, a lot, I did go to Sunday school and for a while we took the kids to the Unitarian Universalist Church, although I think they were young enough that they just colored pictures of uh, different religious figures. But we, tr you don't even remember it, do you? No. We teach them morals. Absolutely, we teach them laws. Well. So I grew up Christian, and every, every the society around me is Christian, mm -hmm. with other influences from different things, different religions. And um, not only do, do the children learn that directly from her parents, but they learn it from their friends and from other family members. They learn it from just living their lives. Yeah, and before we get too defensive, can I point out, I grew up with a lot of Christian kids. Christian kids hit each other a lot. It happens a lot, and they don't always say they're sorry. Do Jewish kids hit them? Hit each other too? Uh, Jewish kids hit each other. They usually, I don't know. They just kind of argue. But yeah, no. Jewish kids hit each other plenty. It happens with all kids. These are things that take time, and different kids handle in different ways. But again, I, this doesn't seem to me something that going to church fixes. Um, what was the thing you had? Anybody else ever tell her about Sunday school? Do do other kids tell you about? Church when school? they go to Sunday school, do they try to not share Sunday what they learn? Church school. Mm. Okay. Well, really, at school yesterday, when I was waiting for the Boys and Girls Club bus, we sort of 
gotten into a talk about how, like, and some kids go to church. They say that they go to church. And, like, when I say that I don't believe in God, when, like, how they're most sometimes surprised. The kids were a little bit surprised that I didn't go to church. Do they ever try to teach you or tell you things that they learned in Sunday school so that you'll learn them too? Does anyone ever no, try no. to teach you about no, God? No. or? I, when I went to Sunday school, I remember lots of activities that had to do with like people in robes and Whoa. sandals. I don't really remember learning any morals. I think I picked those up at home and just from society. And I went through um, all the way until they tried to confirm. I guess you sign a paper saying you're confirmed. Mm -hmm. And um, I tried to have them rewrite it. We rechanged some of it a little bit. And then I refused to sign it and finally did based on the, your grandmother will be really upset if you don't do this. Yeah, that's strong too. It's pressure. It's the same yeah. thing I think you're talking about. Not presenting to your kid, oh, you better be an atheist because otherwise your mom's going to be so upset. You're going to break her heart. I certainly don't want to do that, but your mom will be so upset. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> She's trying to make a joke. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, I, I do want my son to know that he's okay with me, whatever it is he believes in. If he decides someday that he's a Yankees fan, then I have no son. But religion-wise, I think we're okay. Mm. Um, that was a joke for those who might be calling in to <laughs> chastise me for that. Um, I, I, while I agree with the sentiment, mm -hmm. I think that being who I am and believing, knowing what I do, having the thought process that I do, not knowing or believing anything really. But um, I would argue if she did turn out to be Christian sure. or Jewish or Buddhist or whoever it is, I would question. And I feel like I do that in every part of her life. If she likes Pokemon, why do you like Pokemon? Cool. You know Pokemon aren't real, right? Yeah. Neither are dragons. They'd be, it'd be cool, though. But we can also look at, <laughs> even with dragons or unicorns, things that are mythological and agreed that they're mythological by pretty much everyone. You know, she likes that stuff and knows that in her imagination they can be real and still be loved and appreciated. And there's still things to learn from those stories and those adventures. Sure. And yeah. If I, if I could further, again, clarify that when I say uh, whatever comes up, whatever my son believes in is okay with me, that in no way means that I'm going to bite my tongue when he says there something stupid, when he says something that I disagree with. He will hear exactly what I think of his beliefs. He'll hear my opinions uncensored. Again, age appropriate. I'm not going to rain down on him when he's two years old. But I don't want to, I, I want to let him know that I still love him, that he's still my son, that I still appreciate him. And at the same time, if he asks me a question, what I think about something, I'm, I don't want to lie to him. That's really the core of it for me. I don't want to lie to my children, either to make them think a certain way or to make them behave a certain way. Agreed. Um, do we have any other Twitter questions? Um, oh, the children's books. We should mention... Um, what do we got? I think I mentioned Raising Free Thinkers, a practical guide for pan parenting beyond belief, is a guide for parents. That's something akin to, you know, what to expect when you're expecting. Also, highly recommended are books by Dan Barker, that are written for children. Uh, one is called Just Pretend, a free thought book for children. The other is called Maybe Yes, Maybe No, a guide for young skeptics. Um, these are things that a parent who wants to present these ideas to their children could throw out there. And I think we have another call. All right. Caller, you're on the air. Hello. Yes, go on. Do you have a question? If you're watching on the TV, try to um, turn down the volume on your TV or step away from it and just talk on the phone. Otherwise, there'll be this delay. Are we going to lose him? Are you there, caller? I am. Make sure you're listening through your phone and not through the TV, and go ahead and ask your question. I, I just had a, a comment. Um, if I asked... Uh, say you and I were walking through the woods in my backyard or something and 
we stumbled a, across a baseball. And you asked me where the baseball came from, and I simply replied that it came from no. You would probably call me senseless and would probably tell me that that can't be, that's impossible. I mean, it has leather stitching and writing on it. It had to come from somewhere. So you'd probably call me senseless if it was a baseball, but let's say the size of the ball doesn't matter. Let's say it's a beach ball or a softball mm -hmm. or a softball. You would probably respond with the same thing, that somebody had to put it there. It had to come from somewhere. And you would call me senseless, and I believe that teaching our children that the Big Bang Theory, that everything just came and happened by chance, would be senseless upon our part to teach them that and to have them believe that. Um, just wanted to leave that with you. Um, All right. All right. Well, left you, you, you've left that with us. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Um, and you know these these kinds of feelings are out there people are probably going to tell us going forward that we're senseless for what we're how we're approaching things um it's two-way street i can trust me growing up jewish in a very christian particularly catholic town the entire culture around santa claus is pretty senseless to me it seems like a big exercise in lying to children from the outside and then you inevitably come to some horrible day when you have to explain that you were lying the whole time. That's, from the outside looking in, not something I can think very charitably What are you going to do about the Santa Claus thing with your kid? Or what are you doing so far? You know, the, the Santa Claus thing is tricky because uh, my wife is uh, a lot like me, kind of secular, Jewish, there fairly is. liberal beliefs. There's Santa. Um, she was raised Jewish. She loves Christmas. She absolutely loves all the secular aspects of Christmas, she bombards me with, you know, holiday music starting in October every year. We're getting there. Uh, wants to decorate trees, and she wants to do that with our son. Uh, I'm okay with it. I and I, I'm pretty sure she's on board with me that we can do that without ever trying to pretend like Santa's a real person. That the presents really come from Santa. Uh, I don't see that as necessary. I grew up celebrating Hanukkah. Every box that came to me had a card and it told me which relative gave me the present. Right. That seems like a nicer thing to me than the man you've never met who sneaks into our house uninvited, left them for us. Uh, but again, you grow up in something and it seems normal to you. You've got to keep in mind that it's not normal to everybody and that's okay. Um, yeah. And you guys said you celebrate Christmas? Well, we live pretty far downtown, and this these kind of like the last caller. It doesn't come up very often. Mm -hmm. And does that kind of thing where people are trying to tell you that you're senseless or it doesn't make sense that you feel the way you do, has anyone at school ever said that to you? I really feel that that with each generation, it's pushing away from like the last caller's way of thinking. And it seems to me that her school, where she's going, it doesn't happen a lot. She doesn't get a lot of that, I want to call it old school thinking. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I, honestly, going forward, I think my son is going to know that mommy loves Christmas and daddy doesn't so much. We got uh, a caller. We've got another caller. You want to go ahead? You're on the air. Go ahead. Free thought. Forum, you're on the air caller. Do you have a question? Hey, what's going on, gentlemen? Hello. What's going on? Uh, I, I don't want to get into any type of debate with you because you're obviously firm in your beliefs, or should I say non belief. I agree with you on the, as a born again Christian, I agree with you that uh, people should maybe uh, explain the true meaning of Christmas to their children, not, you know, come up with a stand idol. You know, I think that isn't a great thing, also. I agree with you on that. They should let them know that it's about the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, if you don't mind, like I said, I don't really want to get too far with you. I would love if, if, if either of you is interested in just meeting someone, just having a one on one discussion. I feel my heart really goes out to each one of you. I feel like you've had some type of bad experience with the church or something and have, have kind of wandered away from that. 
Question? Faces. Did you have any questions? I don't think uh, did. Now, this was kind of really wondering if y'all had, had a bad experience in church or what had led you to I think you. I've had great experiences in church. And um, at the, the local Unitarian Universalist church, we've had great times. Um, they're really open to, to free thought, and they don't really push any uh, one belief. Although I, we moved away from it because it was still very religious. And in the end, it was still that same Sunday service that I had seen everywhere else. Um, and not that that was a bad thing, but having the kids, having community was great. I've always had good experience with the churches, and I've gone to a lot of churches. I don't yeah, think they've this, left a bad taste in my mouth at all. Yeah, I can't report any bad experiences with the church in my history. I mean, I. Was pretty, you know, I grew up Jewish and was the only Jewish kid in school a lot of years. I remember being kind of bitter that, uh, you know, Christmas was for everyone but me. Mm -hmm. But no, there's nothing like that. Um, and we're even, uh, we've talked and we're probably going to send our son to uh, Sunday school at one of the local temples when he's old enough. Um, partly because we consider Judaism to be not just a religion, but also a, a heritage and kind of a shared a people, a group of people with a shared history, and we want him to be able to absorb that. Um, if anything, it was sad for me to walk away from some elements of the religion that I was brought up in, because I did, I do have fond memories, and they do make me happy to think about. And at the end, I couldn't really uh, kind of make myself believe something just because it led to good results. I wanted to believe something because it was really convincing to me, I, something that I really thought was true. Um, My sentiments, exactly. Yeah, but uh, no, no bad experiences that forced me away from the church or anything like that. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, if you don't want to me, I can't really give you an answer because I was too young to remember any of my experiences. Well, the main reason we don't go now is because we're up till about five in the morning on Saturday night. <laughs> and we just can't seem to do it on two hours of sleep. Although very much, um, and actually I will say the church um, that we were attending is the one that years ago had uh, the um, horrible incident of the shooting. And um, you remember that? Yeah, that was definitely. I don't remember anything. I'm not sure how that applies there, but um, okay. definitely something we'd want to go back to. And we um, we had lost a kid early in our relationship, and we have thought about putting her ashes there at that church. Yeah, you know, not out into the ocean or anything like that, but at a church. And one thing, I, real quickly, we're just about time for our break, but I wanted to say I've got. And the show. Oh, and the show. And the show. Wow, that went fast. One of the things that I really want to do is educate <clears throat> excuse me educate my son on religion i'd like to bring him to different kinds of churches temples anything like that so that he can see what they're all about so that he can know where they're coming from um do we have something we need to say before yeah we, we do uh it's time to start wrapping things up you got the page yeah, yeah go ahead get out your pen and paper this has been free thought forum a program by the atheists the society of no knoxville and the rationalists of east tennessee Please send us feedback. You can leave a voicemail at 865-272-9060. It's a different number than on the screen. That's 865-272-9060. Or you can email us at freethoughtforum at yahoo.com. That's yeah. freethoughtforum at yahoo.com. Let me just say thanks, Joe. Thanks, Reverie. Uh, I had a really good time. Uh, thanks to the folks here at the studio. Every Tuesday from 5 to 6.